This is Twit. So I didn't write about this, but there's a report in the Wall Street Journal um, about the relationship between Microsoft and OpenAI, which is mostly that what I call dot and or hello. Like, I mean, it's like all very obvious, but there's some interesting stuff in here because, you know, I mean, the story's fascinating. This, this will be, this will generate a new round of books about Microsoft, I think, in, in the near future where, you know, they, they see this up and coming company, you know, Kevin Scott gets that relationship going, they invest a billion bucks. Um, they invest another ten million. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't think they thought it was that important. I, I think Kevin Scott was just looking for workloads for Azure, and it was yeah. an opportune moment. A, it was a customer, oh, almost, a, right? Just it a was new such customer. A, yeah, it worked out so well, except it kind of Lucky. didn't. Uh, also, right? Um, there's some little details in here that are kind of interesting because they, you know, you can anyone could probably step through most of the history, but they, like this author claims that there was a period of time at the height of this relationship where. Nadella, <coughs> uh, Satya Nadella, <coughs> excuse me, a little dry here. Um, mm-hmm. Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, and Sam Altman, the CEO uh, for most of this, uh, of OpenAI, would like text each other all day long, like five or six times a row, like little girls. <coughs> and What's like, next? Sam, What's going on, Sam? What you doing what you wear, now? What are you wearing today? Are you wearing your you wearing? <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, like Sam Altman would actually take screenshots of these chats and post them to the internal Slack at OpenAI oh, just please. to speed things along. Yeah, it's just bizarre, right? So Microsoft does the big reveal of their work with, you know, what at the time was being AI, but like Copilot, right? And <laughs> at the end of that year, when Sam Altman was briefly ousted from OpenAI, uh, yes, they, dark this, is, this is referred to internally as the blip. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the blip. That's quite nice. a blip. That's good. But, That's good. um, not surprisingly, um, this, you know, Nadella immediately said, look, we need a, an insurance policy here. We can't, this can't happen. Like this is, and you know, some of the stuff they had said publicly is actually really fascinating. If you go back to this time, um, Microsoft was like, we'll just hire all of you. Like, yeah, come on, come here. So OpenAI may have, I don't think they would have disappeared, but most of those people I think would have followed Sam Altman. Quite, yeah, quite uh, possibly. Yeah, and, and it turns out that's a successful strategy because it's what Microsoft did a little bit later with uh, Inflection and Mustafa mm-hmm. Suleiman, right? The guy who now yep. runs the Microsoft AI org. Um, apparently, it was that month. So this is November 2023 where um, Sam Altman's out and they're like, all right, what, what, <laughs> like, where can we go? And uh, his top choice at that point was Mustafa Suleiman, right? Like, what can we do? And they started talking. And then I don't remember the timing. I want to... I feel like it might have been March, maybe the next year, but whenever it was last year, they hired him. Yeah, you're, no, you're I, exactly right. Six hundred fifty was- million dollars they paid for him. Right. <laughs> well, because you're not buying the company, <laughs> sort of, but you're, you're getting the guy, one of the three the founders. Yeah, <laughs> not, and most of the employees, like that company, disappeared, basically, basically disassembled. Yeah, it was an aqua hire. Yeah. Um, you know, the second of two major examples of this kind of thing with Microsoft in the past three, four years, like it's kind of bizarre. Like it's it, it, this, that itself is really kind of crazy. Now, this report claims that one of the first things that these guys ran into from inflection when they got to Microsoft was like, you know, actually, it's going to it's going to take a while. Uh, it turns out what these guys are doing is really good and it's going to be hard to duplicate this. And um, we had rumors, you know, I would say in the intervening year, every once in a while, like, you know, Microsoft models are getting close. Oh, Microsoft models might be just as good as open AIs. You know, we're gonna, and by the time they had that AI event, um, uh, I guess it was early April, like, yeah, tied to the Microsoft 50th anniversary. Uh, my question was, are they going to talk about that? And they never talked about that. Yeah. Um, they still rely on open AI, obviously, to some degree. But the other big break was, of course, when OpenAI, you know, OpenAI keeps making demands of Microsoft. We need more. We need more. We need more. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I'll be looking for in the earnings today is uh, what Microsoft says about the cost of AI and um, the CapEx cost. You know, it's been roughly $20 billion a quarter. Are we going to see a scaling back of that this soon or not? Maybe it's going to happen eventually. There are reports Microsoft has never acknowledged where they were in early agreements to build up capacity in whatever parts of the world or whatever data centers and have just walked away from those deals. They don't need that capacity anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but the big problem to me here, oh, and by the way, I don't think, I don't know if this is in the report, but I also have something put aside that part of Microsoft's agreement with OpenAI allows them to block this corporate restructuring that OpenAI is trying to undergo where they become a for profit company. 
it's I'm not saying they're going to. In fact, I don't know that anyone is saying that. But apparently, they have the power to prevent that from happening, uh, which would be a weird alignment with Elon Musk when you think about it. But I don't. I don't it's probably not going to happen. But the issue there, though, and the reason you might want to think about that is that these two companies are the ultimate example of competitors and partners, right? They're the yep. co-opetition thing. Mm -hmm. And in this article, they have some cool graphs, so some good graphs. And one of them shows the, uh, this is something I think it came out with um, the Google uh, antitrust remedy hearings, where Google has given figures for how good they're doing or how well they're doing with um, Gemini. And depending on how you look at this, it's really, really good or really bad, but um, they're, they're like half an open AI maybe um, from a usage perspective. But you, the thing you have to remember about Google is they're giving Gemini, Gemini AI advanced away to basically everybody. So if you buy like a Pixel phone, you get it for a year. If you buy like Chromebook you, Plus, you get it for a year, whatever it is. So that stuff might run into a wall uh, in the near term. But open AI's numbers are off the charts, like really yeah. good. They're just upward, you know, like rocket trajectory. And Microsoft's co-pilot numbers are the co-pilot, right? The, the AI chatbot thing. I've never grown. Like they're 20 million compared to 300 million monthly average users or weekly, whatever right. numbers. Um, and that's a big that problem. Seems to, that seems to be true of most other models. Like I'm, my debate here is, is OpenAI that good or do they have the brand recognition? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of the first one and a lot of the last one for sure. Um, I don't know how, I don't know. Well, there must be objective opinions about this from people who actually use these things. But the, the problem is. Yeah, I don't know how objective they are, brother. Like and, I, and I'm, could, I'm always asking folks, what are they using and why are they using it? And and they, they can never put a finger down on. Oh, because it moves so fast. Right now, it changes. Know? It does this. You know, like Brad this morning to me said, oh, I've been I'm like addicted to this cursor AI thing. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it's they, great. But you know, has been out for months. Like, I think yeah. there's an illusion that we're moving fast, and it's open AI that's creating that illusion yep. with constant announcements. I, yeah, I feel like the ult the end game here is pretty obvious, which is that these things will all be roughly in the same place at some point, yeah. right? And that it's it is going to come down to marketing and partnerships and deals to get into different places and very effective FUD, right? Like, just, well, that's mar just that's marketing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so uh, OpenAI is clearly winning the race right now. And in, for micro Microsoft, it's a little bit awkward because they, they've they taken OpenAI products. They've, I, this is a little harsh, but it kind of rebranded them as co-pilot products. They they build on top of it for sure. Mm -hmm. They talk about the secret sauce they have and they do extra stuff. And, th and they have the, all the Microsoft 365 tie-in stuff, which is great and, you know, very good for them and for, you know, corporate customers, et cetera. But they do things like give away things that OpenAI charges for, and none of this has moved the needle. And I think this is the, you know, in the Microsoft space, we're very happy with the fact that Microsoft finally has a, a good brand for something. Like Microsoft is horrible at branding. Yeah, no, thank, thanks GitHub, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever, but they took they ran with it, right? Like they did totally. that with Surface, right? Surface was this kind of stupid thing that nobody wanted. It was expensive and they moved it into something else that's less expensive and stupid. Doesn't matter. But <laughs> Surface is a good brand. It was, you know, it, uh, Skype was a good brand. Xbox is a good brand. I mean, but they also overutilize them. Like they do sully the brand in the sense that they course, use the name yes. everywhere. This is the company that named everything they were making Windows something, including yeah. something called Windows Media Player for Mac, which you had to know. <laughs> no one would want. I, I mean, think. Yeah. So it, it's, uh, yes, they're, they're, this is what happens when you can't do something right your entire life. And when you get it right, you just beat it to death. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem to be working. And I think, you know, this is not a, this is not an epiphany. I mean, I, this is obvious. These two companies are going to have, it's going to be ugly. You know what I mean? Like this ends badly. So yeah, I mean, curious. you hope that they, I mean, clearly the press is for Microsoft to have a good enough model that you're simply not dependent on open AI. Um, I don't know that that's come true yet, but I also well, don't know that we have a good assessment strategy anyway. Right, right. It, I think so much of this stuff is perception of the model, not reality of the model. I think you're it turns right. out to be what the product is every time. The, yeah, so this is true of anything, but uh, AI, it's, it's um, the easiest thing to try. So someone will use uh, one chatbot and ask us some questions like, oh, look at this thing. It's terrible. It's the worst. 
and then they move on to something else. And maybe they get a good answer somewhere else and they use it for a little while and they're like, this is good. And it's like, well, what about that other thing? And like, oh, that's garbage. Like, well, when did you use it? It was like 36 hours ago. That's way too much time. You yeah. don't have an opinion anymore. Like the, these things have been improving so fast. Yeah. Um, well, no, I, again, I'm, I'm not convinced that they are. I believe that is <laughs> okay. part of the hype process. Okay, that's fair enough. Right? Because it's really hard to measure improvement. That's right. So I don't, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll, you know, I'm sure someone has already ported chat GPT to the Commodore 64 or whatever. I, you know, I don't know. I, I played Doom on my dishwasher last month. So yeah. I love it. <laughs> That's good. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.